Tesla has had a brilliant strategy when it comes to their battery supply chain. If you watched our videos in the past on the truth about their batteries, we've talked about how their different chemistries have evolved over the years. But in the last quarter of 2019, they've made a couple of strategic acquisitions. One of them is Maxwell Technologies, which you've probably heard of, and another you probably haven't. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, how Tesla is going to move forward with their battery supply chain. But before we begin, if you're new, thank you so much for watching. We ask you consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of our future videos. We are a channel dedicated to the future of technology, energy, and transportation. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba Da Vinci. When Tesla started out with a dream of building hundreds of thousands of EVs, there wasn't enough battery capacity in the world to make that happen. And so they invested in the Gigafactory and later Gigafactories two and three. But the Gigafactory in Sparks, Nevada was a partnership between Tesla and Panasonic to start producing lithium ion batteries at a scale large enough to be able to put thousands of cells in each car and sell hundreds of thousands of cars. This was a smart move for Tesla because Tesla didn't have the expertise to make their own batteries. And rather than waiting around for the technology or the market to be right for EVs, they pushed ahead themselves and started with what they could, which was a partnership with Panasonic, a well-established lithium-ion battery manufacturer from Japan. In 2016, Tesla actually started a strategic partnership with Jeff Don, who is a legendary lithium-ion battery researcher, and Tesla pulled him away from a 20-year deal he had with the company 3M to start doing research and development for Tesla. This is a five-year deal that started in 2016 and will end in 2021, but it's already been pretty fruitful. You've probably seen reports about the 1 million mile battery, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But that partnership was the start of their long-term strategy. Get a partnership with Panasonic and start making batteries and start producing cars. Don't let anything stop you, and eventually move to a place where you can actually start to manufacture your own batteries yourself. Tesla is obsessed with vertical integration, which is the idea of controlling every aspect of a supply chain rather than having vendors and third-party companies to rely on. This is expensive up front. You have to build more factories like the Gigafactory and invest more money, but long-term it can really pay off by not being beholden to any one company. So the first acquisition that happened in April of 2019 was that Tesla purchased Maxwell Technologies, an ultra-capacitor company here in San Diego, California. A lot of people thought this was going to be Tesla's move into starting to make their own batteries, but not exactly because Maxwell Technologies is actually a ultra capacitor company. If you're curious about ultra capacitors, check out our video. We'll link it in the video and the description on ultra capacitors and how they work. But Tesla doesn't currently have any ultra capacitors in their cars. Now this Maxwell technology acquisition might change that. And the most compelling use case for ultra capacitors in their cars right now is for really, really good regenerative braking and really fast acceleration. Ultra capacitors are really great at charging and discharging really quickly. Without an ultra capacitor, when you slam on your brakes, the rate at which you can charge your battery pack is only so great. And after that, you have to use your friction brakes to slow down. But with an ultra capacitor, that level might be much higher, allowing you to capture more of that braking power and almost not even need your brakes at all. And this means that the ultra capacitor is charging and discharging and your battery pack isn't. And then if you're in stop and go traffic and you speed up and you slow down, the ultra capacitor could sit in the middle as a small system and power your car for those little bursts and for slowing down. And all the while your battery pack isn't being touched at all. If the amount of energy in the ultra capacitor was really high, it could charge your battery at a lower rate, allowing your batteries to be happier and while still collecting that extra energy. This is a really key deal and I have a feeling that in future Tesla models, they're going to introduce a small ultra capacitor in the mix for this exact reason. The same is also true for performance. If you hit the accelerator as fast as you can, there's a limit to how quickly your batteries can discharge and provide power. But with an ultra capacitor, that would be much higher. When you need to overtake a car on the freeway or come out of a turn if you're racing, that could be a big performance benefit. It makes me think that the 2020 Tesla Roadster just might do this very thing. We'll report more on that as we find out more. Now, the more interesting part about the Maxwell acquisition is in a technology that they use which is called dry electrode coating. 
And this is a process that they actually currently use for their ultra capacitors. And they have actually published a white paper and I'll put a link to that in the description where they talk about using that process for lithium ion batteries. This technology can be used on any modern chemistry of lithium ion batteries, including more advanced chemistries that are coming out in the future. The process replaces the traditional wet slurry process of coating, which has more chemical toxic solvents and can actually adversely interact with the electrodes themselves. Maxwell's dry coating technology is comprised of three main steps. Dry powder mixing, powder to film formation, and lastly film to current collector lamination. When commercially ready, this process is going to be cheaper, better for the environment, and it actually results in better battery performance in some key ways. In their white paper, Maxwell claims that their dry coated electrodes deliver higher power than their wet coated counterparts. The bigger takeaway from the study is that the dry coated electrodes can actually be discharged to 100% while still retaining 90% of its original capacity after 2000 cycles. A rough calculation puts that at around a 500,000 mile range for the batteries. So that's pretty exciting. And that's just using conventional NMC 111 formulations. NMC is what they use in this paper. And that's the next thing I wanted to talk about. If you watched our Truth About Tesla Battery series, in part one, we talked about the chemistry that Tesla employs, which is NCA or nickel cobalt aluminum. In comparison to most manufacturers who use NMC, which is nickel manganese cobalt. The reason why Tesla does this is because with NCA batteries, their batteries only have about seven to 9% cobalt. And cobalt, from that video that we made, is the biggest problem with lithium ion batteries. Cobalt is really, really critical for batteries, but it's also very scarce and only really found in one part of the world, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This is a very volatile part of the world where supply chains can potentially be disrupted and costs are very high. So cobalt is something that we want to eliminate or reduce as much as we can. The latest and greatest of NMC technology is called NMC 811, which basically has a eight parts nickel, one part cobalt, one part manganese formulation. This is important because that puts NMC chemistry closer to the 10% of Tesla's NCA batteries. But either way, Maxwell's dry coating technology has been reported to work regardless of the chemistry of the battery. So there's a lot of good news there. And we're gonna talk more about some of the future 1 million mile battery things in the future as well. But in this video, we wanna talk about their supply chain and their goal of building their own batteries. Now the Maxwell acquisition is not gonna get them there because Maxwell doesn't currently have any battery capacity or manufacturing equipment or capabilities or process. That's where Tesla's second acquisition comes in. And this one kind of flew under the radar unless you really follow Tesla closely. In an article by Electric, they reported that Tesla has purchased a Canadian company called Hybar Systems. Now this is really important. Based on their filings and their reports back at the last quarter, they didn't have any association with Hybar Systems. And in their latest filings here in October, they've listed that as a subsidiary. So clearly the acquisition has happened in the last couple of months, and this is going to be really big because Hybar Systems does in fact manufacture batteries and they build the equipment to manufacture batteries. So Tesla's plans are becoming pretty clear. And I personally think that this timetable is pretty aggressive for Tesla who might be manufacturing their own batteries as early as 2020. We mentioned in our previous video about Tesla and Panasonic's partnership that Panasonic has frozen any further investment in the Gigafactory 1. What Tesla might do is as they build the other modules and they build out the Gigafactory 1, they might start manufacturing their own batteries in that corner. And maybe they'll use both for some time. And based on when the Tesla Panasonic partnership dries out, maybe Tesla will start manufacturing all of the batteries in the entire plant. But this is a really critical move for Tesla because by partnering with Jeff Don on more advanced chemistries for lithium ion batteries, and then the Maxwell acquisition with the new dry coating technology, and now buying high bar systems to actually have the manufacturing plants and machines and processes to build lithium ion batteries, Tesla is moving into their final chapter of their battery plan, which is building their own batteries. What's really amazing about this is that every other company saw electric cars and said, oh, we don't have enough batteries. So let's forget about that. Tesla, what they did is they said, let's talk to people who are making batteries today, ask them what they need, build a plant with enough 
volume and a big enough footprint to start making millions of battery cells and let's start making evs today we're not going to wait all the while let's deeply invest in r d and buy the right strategic companies like maxwell and Hybar to then eventually transition into making our own battery packs this is a really big move because i believe that the battery is going to be at the heart of tesla's advantage they are trying to drive down costs per kilowatt hour and increase the energy density in kilowatt hours per kilogram and they're going to be able to do both things in-house much more efficiently than if they rely on other vendors to do so. Vertical integration is an interesting concept that Tesla has taken full hold of. It is going to be costly up front. You've seen how many billions they've invested in things like the Gigafactory and all these different partnerships. But eventually when they do start making their own batteries, they're gonna have a really big advantage. And the faster they can start manufacturing their own batteries, the faster they can start learning and iterating and improving the formulations. We mentioned that Tesla currently uses an NCA chemistry. And it looks like in the future, the NMC811 formulation might be superior in terms of number of cycles and energy density. And now Tesla is going to be able to make that move and build batteries that will help them in their cars going forward. This is not going to be easy and it's not going to be immediate. Tesla is not going to start making their own batteries tomorrow. The knowledge and know-how and capabilities and process to make batteries will take them some time. But you can be assured that Tesla is going to move in this direction. And maybe the Model Y, maybe the next generation of Model 3s or the next generation of Model S's will come with this new technology and this new battery manufactured entirely in-house. And that's pretty exciting. And I love seeing such an amazing plan come together. They didn't want to let anything stop them. And all the while they had both short-term and long-term plans planning on their horizon. And now they're going to be able to deliver on that. So what do you think? What's the most exciting thing that Tesla's doing right now? Is it not their battery? Is there something else? How do you feel about their acquisitions? And how is it going to propel them into 2020? We know the Model Y is coming online. We'll have a future video talking about that. And I think the Model Y is going to be their most popular car in North America by a mile. So they're going to need enough batteries to keep the Model 3 plugging along and start ramping up Model Y here in the, in the coming years. If you read the news, you know that Tesla delivered almost a 100,000 cars in the last quarter. And that's an amazing number for a young company. But because it didn't quite meet expectations, their stock did take a hit. And again, I do think that Tesla's stock is a buy right now personally because of all the investments that they've made. But that's just my opinion. That's up to you. Maybe we'll make a future video about Tesla stock and how they're valued and if it's fair or not. But that wraps it up for now. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you'll subscribe and stay tuned. We have a ton of future videos planned. I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.